My freshman year of computer science was insane. I came in not knowing anything, but I finished the year working at my dream software engineering internship, finishing a research paper, and being admitted into a master's program. Yes, all freshman year. But to really understand my story, I need to rewind the clock a little bit and take you back to August 19th, 2019, my first day of college. I went to Georgia Tech, and that semester I took a bunch of intro to computer science courses, like intro to object-oriented programming and discrete math. At the same time, I was focused on perfecting my resume and practicing leak code because I really wanted to land a software engineering internship. Going into September, I was on top of my game. I went to every single career fair, taking 40 to 50 copies of my resume and talking to as many recruiters as possible. I attended different tech events just to network and I really felt like I was accomplishing a lot. Academically, I was also doing really, really well. Discrete math was just a bunch of true false truth tables, so that was super easy. I scored a 99 on my first exam. Object-oriented programming at this point was just a repeat of AP Computer Science and I scored, I think, 104% on my first exam. So things were on autopilot going super, super well. Then October hit. And that's when things started to go downhill. All the companies I applied to in September started sending rejection after rejection because no one really wants to hire a freshman. And worst of all, at least when girls reject you, they usually give you an excuse before they say no. But these companies would just flat out ghost me. I did land a few interviews, but they were tough. During one interview, someone asked me, when you type google.com in a browser, what happens? And I said, oh, easy. It it connects to your Wi-Fi and it loads up the page. They said, no, what actually happens. And I said, well, your Wi-Fi sends a signal to space and it gets the result. And they said, again, what actually happens? And that's when I realized I had no idea how the internet actually works. And if you're laughing at me, why don't you ask your 17 year old college freshman self, what is DNS caching? What is UDP connection? Yeah, I know you have no clue about what I'm talking about. And then another time in another interview, this guy was like, what are the four object oriented principles? And I was like, oh, this is so easy. Inheritance, polymorphism, encapsulation, and abstraction. And then he said, okay, give me an example of each one. So then I started to explain data privacy fields and subclasses within code. And he's like, no, 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 no. Use different objects within this room, this physical room, and explain the four principles. And at that point, I was like, huh? And then he said, take a look at this painting. What does this tell you about abstraction? And I'm like, ha ha ha, abstract art. Needless to say, that internship was a no-go. So as my internship potentials were tumbling down, my classes also gave me a huge slap on the face. So you know how when a rookie joins the NBA, they have a welcome to the NBA moment, like when a superstar dunks on them and they get humbled and humiliated? Well, for me as a freshman, I had a welcome to college moment in discrete math. The first exam was super easy. Like I said, I got a 99% on it. And I thought that I really had the class figured out. Then the second exam came and I didn't really study much because I assumed it would be like the first one. And I walked in super confident and I walked out super depressed. I scored a 60% on that exam, one point away from failing. And I might be a little dramatic, but as a person who got only A's and A pluses my whole life, I graduated high school with a 4.711 GPA as the class salutatorian. Discrete math was a very humbling experience because at that point, it mathematically became impossible for me to get an A in that class. Class, meaning I needed to score a 200% on the next exam to get an A in that class, which obviously is impossible. So my grades were slipping and my internship search seemed hopeless at this point. Then on October 31st, 2019, everything changed. Amazon, the company I had to apply to three different times with a referral, finally got back to me and invited me to a first round interview. And at first I thought the email had to be fake. After all, they're a very prestigious company and I was just a freshman. More shocking than that, the first round interview View was actually super easy. It was just fixing minor bugs within a code base, like changing an incrementer to a decrementer or fixing a small syntax error, things that I could do in my sleep. In fact, fast forward into November, I passed that first round and I moved on to the second round, which was just two leak code medium problems. At this point, after all the leak code practice I had done through the interviews that I had failed, I actually had a good amount of experience. And to my surprise, I passed that interview round. So I moved on to the third round and I really thought that I had a shot to bag this internship. And so much so that I stopped caring about my grades because who cares if I got an A, B, C, D in a class if I got an Amazon internship, my career would be set. So fast forward after Thanksgiving break into December, I came back and I found out that I had a final round interview for Amazon. And I'll admit this interview was a bit of a struggle, but from all my experiences so far, I knew that as long as I communicated what I was thinking, I would be set. And also make sure to establish rapport, maybe a little bit of small talk at the beginning of a conversation, make the interviewer laugh. One time I was talking to a 
recruiter and we spoke in French for a little bit to establish that warm connection because I know a little bit of French. Un peu de français. But anyways, back to the Amazon interview. Once I actually coded up my solution, he didn't even make me run the code. And guess what? I passed. I did the interview on a Friday and by Monday I had an offer for Amazon that paid me $45 an hour with a $6,500 housing stipend as a software development engineering intern. And that semester, to my surprise, I actually ended up with good grades. I got all A's except for discrete math where I got a B. So my GPA at the time was a 3.81. And if you thought that semester was chaotic, my next semester, spring 2020, was an entirely new level of stress. So something you should know about me, I came into college with a lot of dual enrollments and AP classes already completed. I had taken all these AP exams and I had done all these dual enrollment classes, which effectively gave me 62 college credits, which is equivalent to two years worth of college already completed. Meaning that I was on track to graduating in spring of 2021 instead of spring of 2023, so two years instead of the traditional four-year degree. And now you might think, oh wow, you're so smart for graduating early. But this actually scared me. It meant that after my internship this upcoming summer of 2020, the following summer of 2021, I would go into the full-time software engineering job market at the age of 19. And I was like, nope, I cannot do that. So I started desperately looking for master's programs to delay my graduation. Luckily, Georgia Tech has a BSMS program that allows you to complete your master's degree one year after your bachelor's by taking some electives at the graduate level. Plus, if I became a teaching assistant during the program, I would get a tuition waiver and free housing. So I would be able to get a whole master's degree in computer science with an AI concentration for free and spend only one extra year in college. It sounded great, but there was one big problem. I needed to apply and be accepted into the program two semesters before starting my master's just for the grad classes, which meant I needed to apply that spring semester of 2020, which meant I only had a few weeks left to submit my application. Stress was an understatement. Because for a master's application, you need two letters of recommendations from professors. But because I was so focused on landing an internship the semester prior to this, I would never go to my classes. I had a really bad habit of skipping them. So when I went around to asking my professors for recommendations, most of them didn't even know who I was. One professor even asked me to send a picture of myself and she still didn't recognize me, so I was in quite the pickle. But I had this genius idea. I applied to be a computer science research assistant. For those who don't know, Computer science research is a glorified way of saying you're doing a coding project under a professor. Through this, I figured I could get a letter of recommendation because the professor would have to know me if we were working together. So for my research project, I built a disaster response simulation for third world countries using Python Pygame in Network X. The goal was to optimize resource allocation after disaster struck using genetic algorithms. It was a really cool project and very thankfully, my professor actually wrote me a letter of recommendation for my master's program. Plus the project I did served as an excellent talking point for the application itself. So I highly recommend this for anyone who's trying to go into grad school. Then fast forward into April, I found out that I actually got into the master's program, which was super exciting. And that was also around the time I was working on my research paper and getting that ready to go. Then fast forward into May, I officially completed my first year of college and I was preparing for my software engineering internship at Amazon later that month. And if you're interested in what my exact experience was like at Amazon, leave a comment down below and I might make a video on that. Well, that's about all I have in this video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it and if you did make sure to hit the like button subscribe if you haven't already and if you're interested in my completely free tech newsletter link will be down below check it out and if you're interested on what software engineers do on a day-to-day -day basis you might like this video right here